All right, we're moving right along with these 300 facts, and this one's gonna be all about the canines. We're gonna start on the maxillary canine, and the maxillary canine has the greatest cervical prominence of any anterior tooth. And we're gonna see that there's a theme of prominence for the maxillary canine. So if you come here to the cervical area, you can see it's quite prominent right here. So there's this large kind of bump as it slopes downward, but it's very prominent in the cervical area. The maxillary canine, when viewed from the proximal, tends to be positioned with the most nearly vertical axis. So it's a very straight tooth. So from the cusp tip to the root tip, very straight axis. Now we're gonna get into some very commonly tested on topics here. These, you can almost guarantee, will be on your test. So I have a maxillary canine right here, and then I have a mandibular canine right here. So we're gonna look at the maxillary canine right now. The maxillary canine has the greatest overall tooth length, so it's the longest tooth. Going on to the next point, the maxillary canine has the longest root of any tooth, both the longest tooth and the longest root, but not the longest crown. That's gonna be the mandibular canine. And then we have this point here, the maxillary canine has the longest cusp. Now when I talk about longest cusp here, I'm just comparing the two canines. So I'm not saying it's got the longest cusp in general, but whenever I say that one has the longest cusp, I'm just comparing it to the other canine. And if I say one has a shorter cusp, I'm just comparing it to the other canine. So be very, very careful here because the mandibular canine has the longest crown, but the maxillary canine has the longest cusp. So let's go to the next slide and we'll look at why. So later on, one of the facts we're gonna learn about the mandibular canine is that the mesial surface is very straight. You can draw a straight line up the mesial surface, and the mesial surface is almost in line with the vertical axis of the tooth. So because it goes straight up here and just keeps going up, 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 and then we stop up here, it makes the cusp tip very small. So even though it has the longest crown, that very straight mesial wall coming all the way up there makes it have a very small cusp tip. So the mandibular canine may have the longest crown, but it's gonna have a shorter cusp. Now over here, that cusp is much bigger, but it's not the longest crown. So that can be a little bit confusing. Make sure that on the test you're looking at, are they asking about the cusp tip or the crown length? The maxillary canine has the greatest facial lingual crown dimension of any anterior tooth. And this has to do with that cervical prominence here. Because that bulges out so much, it's gonna make for a long facial lingual dimension. And notice here it says anterior tooth. Because if you're talking posterior teeth, the molars are definitely much wider in a facial lingual dimension than this tooth. So make sure you pay attention to if it's asking about anterior or posterior. For the maxillary canine on the distal contact, it's gonna be pretty centered. So if you come here and look at this picture and look at this canine, you'll see that the contact point is just about in the middle of the tooth right there. And we already know that it's in the middle because of that memory aid that we've got for I just jacked Michael Jackson's moped. And I never get tired of saying that because this is such a good memory aid. It helps so much and can answer a good string of questions for you on the test. The maxillary canine is the only maxillary tooth that has the potential of contacting both the anterior and the posterior teeth. And I am sure you've come across this in your study materials and it's a question they love to ask on the boards. Now for the mandibular teeth, it's the mandibular first premolar which contacts anterior and posterior teeth. So if you look here, we've got that maxillary canine and it's touching the canine and the premolar. And then if we look at the premolar, it's touching the canine and the premolar. The maxillary canine's cusp tip is located facial to the lingual axis. Like, what is that supposed to mean, right? Like, you're taking the test and you see that and you're like, what is this saying? This is why you're going to love these videos because they just break it down and make it so easy. So the maxillary cusp tip here, we're looking from the incisal. Here's the maxillary cusp tip. And if we're looking at the lingual axis, it's located facial. It's more toward the facial than the lingual. So because it's more toward the facial, when you look at it from the incisal, you're going to see more of the lingual portion of the tooth. And then the middle facial lobe of the maxillary canine includes the cusp tip. 
and that's different than the mandibular canine. The maxillary canine has a distal bulge, and so the distal portion is gonna be bulkier than the mesial portion. So the mesial and the distal are asymmetric. So if you look right here, you can see that this distal part is more bulky. And if you come over here, you can see that this distal part, it jumps out much more than the mesial does. And then the shape of the crown from the facial is gonna be a pentagon. We're moving on to the mandibular canine. And the mandibular canine has the straightest mesial alignment from crown to root. And remember, that makes for a very small cusp tip, even though it has the longer crown. And then the mesial surface of the crown right here is almost parallel to the long axis of the tooth. And that's because of how straight it is. The mandibular canine has the longest crown dimension of any other tooth. But remember, the maxillary canine has the tallest cusp, whereas the mandibular canine has that short cusp. And again, here's a good summary. I know we've been through that a lot. If you want to see it again, go ahead and pause the video right here and take a look. And then I'm going to move on to the next slide. The mandibular canine has a less prominent cingulum than the maxillary canine. And again, this follows the theme of prominence for the maxillary canine. So the cingulum here on this maxillary canine is going to be more prominent. And the mandibular canine is going to be less prominent. And then the mandibular canine is going to be narrower than the maxillary canine. And the way I remember that is I just carry on with that theme of prominence. You know, the distal bulge right here makes it so the tooth is much wider than the bottom tooth. So the mandibular canine is more narrow than the maxillary canine. The mandibular canine is the anterior tooth that's most likely going to exhibit a bifurcated root. And when it's present, it's going to divide into a facial root and a lingual root. The mandibular canine has the longest root length of any mandibular tooth. Here's an example of where you really have to look for the details. So notice we're asking about the mandibular teeth. If we were asking about all teeth, then it would be the upper canine. In cross section, the root of the mandibular canine is irregularly oval. So if we look right here, I've got this line going over here and we're imagining that we're just chopping the tooth in half and we're looking at a cross section here. So the root of the canine is irregularly oval. And then the cross section of the mandibular canine at the CEJ is ovoid, but wider mesiodistally than labially. So they're just asking, you know, the same question in a different way. They may say irregularly oval, they may say ovoid. Now this last part is a little bit abstract and can be kind of tough to visualize here. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so here we are at the CEJ, and this is the cross section at the CEJ, and this is supposed to represent the canal. And if you look at the labial or the facial in the mesial distal dimension, it's gonna be a little bit wider than it is on the lingual. So it's almost as if you're reaching your finger back there and you're just kind of pinching the back end of that tooth on the lingual. And then as we move further down the root, the cross section is gonna be more flattened in the mesiodistal dimension. So we have a more squished tooth. So at the top of the tooth, you're just starting at the back end of the tooth, you're squishing the lingual side, and then as you move down, you're starting to squish the whole tooth on the facial and the lingual. When compared to the maxillary canine, the mandibular canine has contact areas more incisal. And just think of where it's at here with these incisors. Everything's pretty much more incisally located. Now let's just review the contact points on the lower arch here. Instead of I, J, J, M, J, M, it's going to be I, 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 M. So it's mostly all incisal until you get to the distal contact of the canine, which is going to be middle. So the main takeaway here is that both of these canines, distal contact is in the middle, but the lower canine is going to have its middle contact just positioned a little bit more incisally than the maxillary canine's contact. So really, really nitpicky question, but the way you're gonna remember it is just that everything here on the lower is in generally more incisally positioned. The mandibular canine has a continuous convex facial surface from incisal to apical. So if you look at this curved line here, it's supposed to represent that convex nature of the mandibular canine. And then another way to say it is the mandibular canine makes a C shape from crown tip to root apex but that is different 
then this point we talked about with the maxillary canine that it has the greatest cervical prominence. So don't get those two confused. The maxillary has the greatest cervical prominence of any anterior tooth. And then the mandibular canine is the most convex. The mandibular canine has an incisal edge that's lingual to the long axis. So that's opposite to the maxillary canine. So if we're looking at the mandibular canine from an incisal view, we can actually see more of the facial than we can the lingual, which is the again the opposite of the maxillary canine. And that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And let's just skip on over to the next video.